Hey friends, just wanted to share this little review and setup video of the lightweight Renogy 220 watt folding solar panel and uh, show you a comparison with some other similar panels as well as a little setup. I have the version here with the charge controller that may or may not be pertinent to you. It is available without as well, but hopefully this helps either way. So this bag is not padded, which saves some weight and space. Hold on, bud. Saves some weight, but it is not going to protect the panels from hard knocks. So the panels are facing out on both sides. So that's just something to be a heads up. This one folds in the same way, my other pan, uh, Renogy panel, but it's in a much harder case. So this is, yeah, yeah. So this is, um, obviously very flexible you know it's not going to take up any space to store when you put it in your vehicle or wherever you're going to store it so here we go i've actually never done this i've watched my friends do it <laughs> all right these are magnetic in some way yeah that's cool so these stick together by magnet which is really nice so it's easy to open you don't need clips No clips to undo. Okay, so there's the four panels. So that's pretty slick. And here are the legs. So they are not secured. They don't need to be secured and they aren't secured in any way. So you just kind of flip them out and they just kind of stay. All right, it's pretty easy, honestly. All right, so you can see it's clearly bigger when it's, you know, folded open, unfolded. And, but it's definitely less than ha uh, twice as big, if that makes sense. So these 100 watt, or really 250 watt panels in this 100 watt folding setup are bigger than two of these, if that makes sense. So then there's the Jackery 100 watt. I just have these out to, compare sizes obviously a 100 watt jackery is much smaller footprint open as well as closed <laughs> okay so here you go 220 watts so that's really a lot of wattage in that footprint i really like that aspect so these frames i assume are aluminum they're very light um they're not as rugged. I, I wouldn't say it doesn't seem as rugged. Obviously, there's only one way to know. That's to go beat the heck out of it for the next five years. But these are much thinner, if you will. See my hand than this guy. This one's way bigger. So this is each of these panels is half the thickness that the frame is. Obviously, that's not the panel. So one of the immediate things you'll notice about these panels is this textured coating. Very interesting. I don't know if this is for durability. I mean, it's not glass, whereas these older ones are just glass. There's no texture. The lines, of course, are underneath. This older energy panel has definitely held up to abuse being in the back of the trailer, bouncing around. And it has not had any problem with the glass. But this is just an interesting coating. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it's for weight reduction or durability. Like I said, I haven't had any problems with the durability, but it would make sense. It might be the back feels a little textured too. In the packaging, we have stuff so this is the kit version comes with a voyager Renji controller it is stated as waterproof it is rubberized on the back some coverage over the uh, wire terminals there and there it is waterproof and i have to say from the slightly different version of the similar controller that i have on this Renji panel I will say it is waterproof because this thing has always worked in all conditions. So there's another Voyager. This is just a different style. It says B01 because there's no battery hooked up. Hi. James is here, of course. And the wiring that it came with in the package are two sets of MC4 controllers. So my friends who I borrowed this from had to buy 
this adapter to get from the charge controller to the battery. So this has eyelets, obviously. Just gonna hook one end there, the other set's gonna go from the panel. All right, so you get the point. So that was a necessary buy separate, unfortunately. So just to reiterate, you're gonna need some sort of pigtail with MC4 connectors to come out of the Renogy. This is the only cabling that it comes with. It can get from the panel. Panel has the wire, MC4 cables. It's wired, and then these guys here come out. But you have to have whatever comes off of this to whatever your choice connection is. So for me, for my friends who I borrow this from, it's a battery on their trailer. So dog. don't don't run over the dog. All right, got these uh, two cables connected. Hook up the charge controller. So they are marked. You can see there, battery. This one you want. All right, so it shows, recognizes the batteries. I've got it connected here. So you'll go amps. Well, of course, nothing's coming in because it's not yet hooked up to the solar panel. So, showing it at 13 volts, which is pretty full. But let's see what we put into it. All right, we have these on their faces so that they are not under load when I hook them up. A lot of people always comment on that. I've honestly hooked all kinds of things up under load and never ever had a problem. So, but just because that's what the manufacturers and the powers that, well, we'll say the experts say, do that just in case, just to be safe. But I have people comment on that all the time. Like, oh, you connected under load. It's like, but it didn't matter. But I don't want to tell you that and then your stuff burn up, so. All right, let's hook these up. They are not under load. They are back on their faces. <laughs> All right, I have these now connected. And let's flip them up. All right, so even though these legs don't, uh, aren't, they aren't fixed. Like, they don't lock or you can't tighten them or anything. They are nice and easy to put out, I'll say that. But it's a very different style than this. But these are more of a pain when you gotta set them up. Yeah, like, unscrew them. Obviously, that's a very relative statement. It's not as easy as those. <laughs> but it is a different style. And if you're looking at the older style Ranji panels, which are still available for sale at this point. All right, here we go. We got some charge coming in. Obviously, we don't have any kilowatt hours yet. You can see the charge. The sun uh, went behind some clouds like right when I hooked this up. All right. Now we're getting 13.2 volts. We're already up a volt. <laughs> <Our point. laughs> we're already up 0.2 volts. Oh, here we go. There's the sun. <laughs> so we're getting voltage. That's good. Right now it's pulling two amps. Two and a half amps because the sun, like I said, oh, here it comes out from behind the clouds. Ah, it was so clear up until a moment ago. All right, so you can choose to see what you're monitoring. You have, of course, amps or volts. So. Right now it's showing the temperature. There's the voltage of the battery. This is the amperage coming in. This is how many kilowatt hours the solar panel has transmitted to the charge controller and into the battery from the charge controller. Of course they're not any yet because we just plugged it in. This is showing 8.1 amps, that's very interesting. You're gonna hit this upper button, the amp volt button, to get a different type of battery. Flooded, uh, I don't know what that one is. Gel, I have a gel in my van still. And lithium, all right. Well, then when you're done with that, just click battery type, or I assume it'll revert anyway. Okay, back, back it goes. Now I can say, oh, you can even choose 24 volt. Okay, I get it. So you hit that button twice and you get to 12 volt and you can change it to 24 volt. So I have used this style of Renogy controller on my older panel for five years now and it's held up, it's been great. So it's simple, it's simplistic. It is a PWM and not MPPT, but I've never had any issue with that. Got a phone call? <laughs> All right, so I've unhooked this, let's put it in the bag and we'll fold up the solar panels.
It is really easy. 50s. I'll pull it up you just before you fold them because they fold inward in halves. Feet down first, then it shuts. And this one, just accordions in. That's easy. Then they just magnet shut. No latches. There it is. Here you can easily see the size comparison. So that's a Jackery folding 100 watt panel. Here's the Renogy 220 watt folding panel and here's the old style Renogy 100 watt folding panel in their cases. So the Renogy 220 watt is definitely much smaller than the case for the 100 watt of the earlier model of Renogy. And the Jackery of course is a very different style of panel but I just wanted to show this is 100 watts. So this is the lightest for sure and most compact but it's not it is wider than the jacker 220 watt you see here so it's definitely shorter but it is wider so just a size comparison in the cases obviously these are made to be portable they're made to travel so that should potentially matter to some of you of course weight may be a factor in your decision too so obviously these jackery style panels or the lightest of course it's only 100 watts so you still have to compare that you're gonna have to have two of these to get the same or similar wattage to the new style Renogy panel that I'm showing you but uh, there is no doubt that this is by far the lightest this guy uh, is 16 pounds so it is pretty easy to pick up but it is tall this one the handle is on the other side so it travels like a normal suitcase but uh, it is much heavier okay well I hope that gives you a little taste of not only hooking up that panel, but also how it compares to the older style Renogy folding panels or even just a smaller, more portable Jackery in this case, but Trapper Keeper style. I don't know what people really call these. Moral of the story is that I didn't get uh, to video in better weather conditions. Today it's raining, it's been hazy every day. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have video footage of this Renogy set up with the Voyager charge controller hitting about 10 amps uh, that I saw when we were camping with our friends and I helped them set this up for the first time. But 8 amps in uh, hazy conditions I felt was pretty good, especially in the month of September, mid-September. So not the height of solar production, of course, but all that to say, if you're in the market for something easily portable uh, with a lot of wattage, and at a fair price, I mean, it's a little less than $2 per watt. Uh, but that includes the charge controller, which is waterproof. So uh, it's very easy to set up, uh, tear down, very portable. Comes with a nice little baggie that's easy to uh, put away. And um, yeah, I, I would give it a thumbs up for sure. I think it's a great way to get over 200 watts in a small, compact footprint. It's light. Be easy enough for most adults to uh, manage uh, without any problem. So I think that's definitely uh, a good good way to go. If you can't install panels on your roof, you don't have that option, uh, and you're just trying to get the most uh, wattage for the space, this is probably the way to do it. All right, hope that helps.